Good morning, land of YouTube. So, uh, sometimes, you know, I may be in different rhythms and flows in life, and I got a lot of different experience. Uh, I remember being a young man, little tiny guy back in the day. My grandmother, Susan, used to drive me to, uh, like, first and second grade occasionally. Something like that. Maybe first, second, third. Uh, we were living here in Santa Rosa, and I used to go out to Oak Grove Elementary. I remember being able to put on any song on the radio in her 1971 or something like that. Uh, Nova. It was like a big body, brown, ugly square headlighted <laughs> Nova. Uh, I think grandma called it Betsy or something like that. And um, I'd put on any song for her and I would change the words to it. And that's how my mind worked when I, when I was little. Oh, life has brought me through some shit. I'm 38 years old now. And um, I got a lot in my head. So I get to express that sometimes in flow state rapping with a, a lot of things I'm passionate about passionate about sometimes and I think maybe it's just coming out of me I don't feel like I'm thinking anymore uh, it's effortless sometimes and sometimes I have to like I, ha I have almost like a, a weird stage fright it's not really stage fright it's more like interrupting the juicy processes of flowing so I'll get in these modes and then I'll go maybe I should be recording it then when I pull out the camera, it's like, okay, I have to get back in that mind space for a second. In any case, um, it's uh, like a snippet of how my mind operates. And I love um, currently being able to be out in nature. And there's a lot of good different angles I see my future going, and every day I wake up, it's better than the next. Um, with that in mind, I don't know what I want to say. I had a, uh, a topic I haven't addressed yet or covered, and it's, it's dream state. And so, you know, last night I woke up, uh, and I had a vision in my head from my dream. And I think that's what dreams are, right? They're like visions that you get to interpret. Some people dream journal. And then you can correlate it after your, a few months. You look back and see what, what, you know, how it affected your life or what it meant. Anyway, so I had an image in my head. And I almost wanted to just start drawing it, but it was too early. It was around one something that I woke up. So I like split my night in half. I went back to sleep. I didn't get out of bed until, well, I woke up right at five. And then I... Stayed in bed for about a half hour on the phone, checking things. And with that in mind, this uh, crazy, chaotic, uh, let's see, it was uh, almost, you know, what I pictured, I took down notes so I can read, remember and then draw it. Um, so I did like dream, dream journal kind of. I took down notes of what I would like to put into art. And it had some things to do with, like, a masculine male cat spirit into this, oh, let's say there was, um, it was almost like evaporating into flame or something like that. And it was in a circular pattern, and there was more native spins to it with feathers around. And... It was this image that, you know, I could not get out of my head. And it's a little, it's a little weird to try to access right now because it's, you know, it's a couple hours later, right? It's a full six hours later. I did take notes, like I said. Um, I'm not looking at those notes currently. But. I would like to share my mind constantly or my mind space that I share constantly because ultimately I see 
a freedom that most people overlook or lack. You know, there's not, I mean, I think at one point there was a lot of people out in nature recreating and healthy and they're doing it for health reasons or just because they want to exercise. They, it's built into them. That's not really ultimately why I'm out here on this trail. I'm not doing it just for exercise. I'm doing this to commune with nature because I feel like I, I am at one with nature. And I have cool things like, you know, the animals right next to me and they don't care if I'm rapping or loud. They're just right with me. And they're not really so much domesticated as um, shit in the past. <laughs> Wild animals would just be scared shitless of me. I would try to be quiet and observe them and they would run. And uh, now, with everything that's gone on and how at peace I am with myself, I believe that the animals feel that peace and that they respectfully see it like eye to eye. Uh, I say that because of how many different interactions on this trail alone I've had with animals, but other parks, other places, other man-made natural places, right? Uh, shit, even a little gopher was coming out and checking us out the other day. Uh, the mantis crawled right onto me and was just, he was just into checking me out while I was checking him out. And that's probably the first time I've ever had a praying mantis interaction like that. I've, I've had them in my, you know, in my hand before probably because I was forceful, but not just one that found me and was checking me out. <laughs> I mean, comment. I feel like an alien. Because the way I think it's really kind of alien to most normal humans. And the comment in my rap was... Uh, <laughs> it was goofy. Because copper makes my skin turn green. <laughs> and not everybody's like that. And so I said, I must be a fucking alien. <laughs> it was yesterday. And I just... I think it's goofy. It's funny, right? What if we're all fucking aliens? Look at that light right behind me. That's a torch, if I've ever seen it. You know, uh, there's a, a recent song that came to my phone via Metallica. It's called Halo on Fire. If you haven't seen that or heard it and you like rock music, check it the fuck out. It's super badass. There's a lot of other things that go into a torch above your head, right? Um, there's a lot of different mythology and ancient Egyptian shit with the same kind of symbols of halos and whew, look at that light. Man, it's just, I mean, it's my path of travel today. I don't plan, I mean, it, I, I'm like, I need to make a video and then the sun's right behind me, right? I'm not trying to fucking actually just put the light behind me. It, it's not, I mean, this is me putting it directly above me, right? I just look up normal give you guys a view and then boop there it is so it's mildly distracting looking at the source of our existence here on earth knowing that I feel this warmth and radiant love on my skin it's a little chilly out here I always love it because I get a mix I like all the climate um, I've always loved all the weather Maybe I just kind of ramble some and flow into the next topic. Maybe that's distracting to some people. I've always loved nature. And in communion with nature, I've always loved weather. I remember being a little guy, putting on my swim shorts so I can go out and be in the storm and, uh, you know, make little trenches that were my own little rivers I was making. So at a young age, I was attempting to remake nature because I loved nature so much and I think that's what humanity does at a, at a higher level sometimes well at least a respectful humanity I was out at the uh oh out by Guerneville to meet my mom and then do a repair on my day off to help out my father and there was a wildlife habitat restoration area and they didn't really do it distastefully. They did it actually with all the native plants. And they're just restoring where human foot traffic has destroyed, right? Well, that's fucking cool. I like that. That idea is A+. Plus. 
And um, and I look, and I'm looking, and there's like one car in the parking lot on the side of the mountain, right? One car, me, and like one other person, right? This is a beautiful area. There's there's tables. There's it's all well maintained. There's hardly anybody over here. And I walk up to the edge, and I'm seeing this new nice restoration area. And there's shit tons of traffic and everybody on the on the public beach that it, that's well advertised. And then there's all these people in the river. I'm just standing there observing them. I can see them. They're all having fun, but they're all cramming into the locations that are widely known, right? And I'm right there out of plain sight, in plain sight. No one could see me. I was just hanging out. They're not even paying attention to me at all. They don't care, but I'm seeing all of it. And that brings me to a point of a definition of a word that could be stigmatic and it's called occult o-c-c-u-l-t right and that means hidden in fucking plain sight directly translates to that now what does that mean to you i don't know i'm always curious what somebody's gonna say Whenever I tell them anything, I say them as in anyone other than myself, because we're kind of, in a weird way, mirrors a lot of us. People mirror what they want to see in others. Some people have stronger wills and they create monsters because of the fear inside of them. And no, not everybody wants to really accept that. Um, and you don't have to for good reasons. You can just go through life and find somebody that's willing to deal with you. And then you have a pair. And you're like identical. Some people get lucky and have a harmonious life from the gate. Some people will compliment each other so well. I have this uh, gift and a curse for looking at everything in a lot of different angles. I look at, well, it's this, you know, are you in a good place? And I'm really just talking about myself. I'm like, am I really in a good place? Do I like the place I'm at? And, um, you know, it's cliche, but it's true. It's the things that we don't like in others that we really don't like in ourselves that we need to face. And uh, a lot of times we'll go through loops and face those things constantly. Some people don't become aware of it and they just sit in their own fucking misery. Some people are happy with it. They make friends with it and they just accept it like this is life. And it's, it's really hard for me when I meet someone and I, there's like an assessment that happens with me. Like I immediately, my, the way my mind works is I assess a situation almost immediately. Just instant calculations of almost like somebody's life path. And... Uh, You know, with that in mind, then I ask them a question, are you happy? And if they say yes, well then fuck, I got like, I mean, it's almost like I really want to respect whatever they got going on. And then I'm like, hold on, let me tell you something. <laughs> and, and then they don't know what happened. It's like fucking some information just hit them right over the head. And it's because I see... I see direction with knowledge and power. Uh, I see, um, what is it, like words of wisdom that can come out of me for different situations and individuals for growth, for fucking, actually for bettering all of humanity because it's the mindset that we can look at any obstacle to overcome with love and compassion and reason and logic. That's my mindset. And so not, a, I don't, I'm going to say it because it's, it's like I look around and I don't, I see what I see now, right? I don't have any problems with it now. I'm actually flowing into the right places constantly. But then I, if I want to pay attention and focus on the other things, I can look around and see it. Like it's there. There's a majority of everybody that's in their rightful places doing their fucking things and and then what? I see it like cogs in a wheel. It's all kind of collectively putting together this 
place we get to live in and experience and share together. And then uh, part of me is sad, like, you know, why, why did everybody have to go through so much suffering? That's what I think. And I look at my life and I suffered a lot. I suffered through so much shit to get where I'm at. And it started with me suffering through shit and, and being pure during it. Being fucking naively innocent and pure during a lot of fucking backstabbing bullshit, people. And, and you know what? It's the people that don't turn around and stab back but stand up for themselves in a righteous way with knowledge, intellect, love, and light. It's those people that are dangerous because, you know, if somebody bears their heart out to you and you think it's a weapon you can use against them, be careful. It's the strongest motherfuckers that know themselves and it's the strongest motherfuckers that used all the shit that they experienced to get where they're at in a loving manner of health, mental health, apathy. I used to have sayings that I would do constantly, love, light, wealth, health, happiness. And that was like my mantra. And then, it, you know, there's honesty, integrity. There's all these beautiful, positive things that, you know, individuals can say to themselves. A lot of times we hear bullshit and we take that bullshit as a human race. There's a lot of it just going back, right it back, right back, right back. What I'm proud to offer anyone that lends an ear is something that only real true power found within can bring. And that's the, the light that I walk with from the inside out. And then there's, uh, you know, this little light of mine, this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. And then there's a, a statement from the Bible of how, how great is that light, right? Especially if it's a dark light. And it's, it's like all the darkness nobody wants to face inside. That once you face that and you bond with it, and it's like, what can really fuck with you? What? I mean, if nothing fucks, fucks with you because you fix yourself from the inside out, nothing can fuck with you. And then how strong of a person are you because of how much shit you went through? And then bring that message forward. Walk, walk through life loving everybody in your path. And then how, how the fuck could that ever be harmful? I mean, I'm almost happy sad over it. Maybe I'm a little emotional. Sometimes emotions are okay. Men can fucking bear tears. I'm, I'm in such a happy state of mind right now. Letting go of a, a message that I have buried in myself, right? Ingrained in myself through all of my years of suffering, through all of my years of learning, through all of my years of knowing I am a good person and knowing that I was a victim in the same respect to learn from what it is to be a victim and no longer lay down. So, you know, I think for many years I went through life with a victim mentality. <laughs> Some people do. Maybe it's the greatest of us that start from Shit's Creek and then transform into something, you know, so, so different. And uh, I am a, a very proud individual now. I'm so proud of myself and all the hard work I've done through life. And that's okay, that's okay, pride. I'm not trying to shove it in nobody's face. I am just making video evidence, messages that I really wish everybody to hear. Because once everybody hears, maybe they'll hear something. Maybe a bit of my information will creep through. And it's like trying to let lights in the cracks. More than one light can shine through, you know that? Especially if you got a lot of cracks. And if you're starting to get some cracks, 
Maybe it's your shell about to break and you're gonna shed a layer. And that's self-work. Not a lot of people fucking like to work on themselves. They wanna look outside and fix everything around them. I'm not saying that I'm trying to just look outside and fix everybody around me. I've done so much self-work to get here. And every day I'm looking for improvement. I'm looking for criticism. I'm looking for uh, ways to improve myself in every fucking respect. And I'm learning from interactions with people. And I'm always ever learning and ever present and looking for more information and more information and more information. I feel like fucking Johnny Five from Short Circuit. He's like, need input, Stephanie. If you haven't seen Short Cir Circuit with Steve Gutenberg, go watch it. It's an older movie. You'll probably have to buy it or something like that because it's not on... I don't think it's on Netflix or anything like that anymore. It's from the uh, early 90s. Late 80s, early early 90s. And I'm a, I'm a 1984 baby. <sighs> so many cool things with that. 1984 and me. And then I read a book, You Are the Universe by Deepak Chopra. <laughs> if I'm honest, I only read part of it. <laughs> It's like, you know what happens is I, I, I get some information and it's like I immediately absorb it. <laughs> I'm just, boop, I know, what it's, I know what it is. I don't really need to look all the way into it. And I, I went through school like that. You know, I, I, I've gone through life looking with my eyes open and learning in a different manner than most people. Most people learn by actually applying themselves to study or textbook or... Uh, whatever it is, and uh, you know, it, it's audiobooks, visual things like that with me because I'm a, I'm a visual, practical, hands-on learner. So I go through life learning every lesson I can. I have a very vivid photographic memory and a very, very detailed, vivid imagination. So the core foundations of my life, one of those was to learn that I substitute God for imagination. And it's a really powerful thing. It's so powerful that it's blasphemous to most people because they're blinded by the truth. And so what I find is, you know, if, if you can imagine God and your imagination is really, 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 really great and you looked at all angles and you didn't turn one away, what, I mean, what the fuck does that make an individual? Very, very, very open-minded, I'll tell you that. And then if you're very, very open-minded and you don't have some kind of disdainful taste towards all these other religions because it's like you married them within yourself. Man, it's, it's a strong place to dwell strength from, I'm telling you. And as humans, I think we need more strength to be honorable, integrity, walking examples of what it is to have integrity. And then we just live by our own moral compass that should be based on humanity's love for one another that most people neglect and shit on. And they, oh, I don't want to lose a life. I'm so sad of that one life lost in a paper. But then they go around killing themselves every day and killing other people's spirit. Fuck that shit. Let's not kill spirit no more. I mean, I, there's some things I just inherently don't agree with. And they're kind of biblical. Um, and it's, it's almost like it's ingrained within me because I see sad travesty that happens, but then there's freedom within that too, because some people really ultimately find themselves and that's who they are and cool. Jesus Christ, you know what? You're not out doing harm. I can guarantee it. You're not out trying to manipulate the world into your viewpoint. I'm not trying to fucking manipulate the world into my viewpoint. I'm just sharing a piece of my mind. Anybody that's open to listening is where they can manip manipulate themselves. And most likely the people that are eye to eye with me are going to listen to this video. And it's going to help better themselves. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe they're going to teach me something. Maybe I've got something to learn. Here's a kitty. Oh, he ran away. Maybe I can get him on camera. There you are, little kitty. He was kind of chilling right next to me and then <sighs> intimidated. Really, 
I think what it all boils down to is everybody can find themselves in one way or the other. But that's what is important is we have to find ourselves, people. Like, to really reunite with spirit. <laughs> and I say, it could be like the holy goddamned ghost, right? Isn't that kind of a chaotic mess to say? The holy goddamned ghost. Hmm. Yeah, there's this um, really, really cool plot twist constantly with a biblical spin to it that, um, you know, I see no harm in everybody finding God in a different way. The harm I see is when they forcefully trying to, trying to spread a message of love, harm someone else. That's, I mean, that's ultimately fucked up. That's killing the human spirit. Human spirit should be the idea of freedom. And then my training says that all of existence was in a blink. Like one snap of the finger. We're just perceiving things in a linear forward motion. That our time is the way it is because of our perception of it. How we want to really see our existence unfold. And by man-made constraint of time forced on us by the Roman Catholic Church. You get that. Like... Everybody's brainwashed into this physical in front of us, but they're never in touch with their urethral aspect. And then they don't have a really good sense of projected self. And then, you know, they're just a hollow shell of themselves divided. Now, if you're, um, <laughs> if you're a nation of a man and you stand divided within, then your nation crumbles all around you, everywhere you go, poison. But if you're united with your true self, Walking with pride, integrity, honesty, and love, and light. Hmm. What a powerful fucking position to be in. And it's a, a great blessing and authority I get to walk through life with. I desire this for everyone. But I'm not going to force it on someone. If somebody says, no, I'm good where I'm at. Fine. Whatever. You're fucking part of that level. That's your level. I call them leveled. Literally, they're leveled right there. I see more. I see infinite possibilities in my head because I have a very great imagination. And so, if my imagination is so fucking great that I can see a more beautiful human race with them in their place, where they're at, cool. They're doing their fucking job already. <clears throat> Whoever it is, on whatever level. And there's a lot of beautiful people, I'm telling you. There are a lot of beautiful people in this world walking around, bringing light like a light worker, you know? <laughs> Do you speak light language? <laughs> oh, God. What a goofy statement. Uh, you know, sometimes, um, sometimes I want to crack myself up because... <laughs> oh, comedy's better if um if if it makes you laugh first. I think right. So I, I made up a joke. I said, if you're an empire of a man, <laughs> hold on, I gotta recall the last half of that one because I can't look at my notepad while I'm filming. <laughs> If you're an empire of a man and immortal, what are you? A manpire. <laughs> manpire? Like, never mind. And you know what? Those ones can eat garlic. <laughs> oh, shit. You'd be like a giant building man. <laughs> oh, shit. How stupid. <clears throat> Spice of life. His invention. And uh, I think... Inherently, we all have this uh, beautiful gift to be able to invent things. But if we're blinded by all of society from the gate, then we have a beautiful curse of inventing trauma in our lives with our you know, negative viewpoints or disdainful taste of the world around us. And then collectively that builds up and it just <clears throat> out into reality. Not a lot of people are ready for that shit, right? 
Oh well. I am uh, about done with this video at the 30 minute mark. Hopefully somebody watched it all the way through. If you have, leave a comment. If you would like to and you're new to this, and you want to like, subscribe, and share, that sounds cool, right? If, if any part of this video offended you, I challenge you to look at why it offended you. Huh, curious question, huh? You might be even madder at me. And then why are you mad? What kind of anger is inside of you? Where does it come from? What makes you feel that uncomfortable? I mean, are we really willing to look at ourselves before we want to harm anybody else? Because right now, I'm just making a video and you're watching it. And then, does that hurt? Like, my viewpoint's differing from yours? So much that you might want to harm me because of it? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe we can get through some really thick ice together if we uh, start chipping away at it. So, take a deep breath. Inhale the past. Exhale the future. Step forward and spread love and light. And uh, a love and light position, sometimes it's uncomfortable because growth is painful. And it, it's even in childhood of growing pains. So a lot of times when we're forced to think or look at ourselves in life, it's uncomfortable, it hurts, it sucks, and nobody really wants to do that shit. Nobody is ready for that. I say that because I'm challenging everybody that is. There's a lot of people that are actually ready for it without knowing it. It's just where can we go as a human race? Can we do this together, people? Can we really learn how to re-love each other in ways that are not harmful? I mean, it really sucks to bring up controversial topics that I see. And it's like a way that I'm looking at to one, repair myself, and two, help unite everybody as a human race back together. Because you can't, you can't get through anything unless you really confront some painful shit. So I'm like open airing it, right? I'm like, hey, why don't we do this and look at it together? What makes you so uncomfortable? Let's find that, and then let's, let's see why. Let's go down into layers within ourselves and really actually look down deep, deep enough to find out why these things are so painful, or why, you know, maybe, maybe somebody that's, you know what, I think somebody that would be upset about being homosexual that are homosexual, they went public and they're like, hey, I'm super fucking homosexual now. Everybody look at me, I'm fucking homosexual. I'm part of the club. But guess what? At some point, they really wanted a, the opposite partner. And they felt like they were ugly enough to never get one. Or they felt like they weren't good enough. And then they made a choice to go the easy route because they saw, well, well, I mean, I can join that group because I, I fit the bill, all right? But they hid from that the whole time. Or maybe they didn't. Maybe they just woke up and they knew it. They were like, nope. Right away, out the gate, I like guys. Those ones... Those ones would probably be the happier ones that are just naturally like that, not trying to poison other people with, look at me, look at me, look at me. They're probably just living in harmony and they're probably more balanced than anybody else. And whatever, to each their own. I really don't care. I'm not like a super gay basher or anything like that. I even almost got, I mean, I, I gave a gentleman a warm hug in a repair environment in Castro District the other day. And I guess I was too attractive to him. He tried to kiss me. And I said, nope, I'm not like that. Please don't kiss me. I wasn't mad. I didn't take it out on him. But I just told him firmly, no, I'm not. That's not me. Sorry. And But he, he wanted to try to push still. And he, he gave me a kiss on my, on my cheek, on my beard, right? And um, he's an okay gentleman. I took it as a warm compliment. But sometimes people have urges that they can't get over, right? And then they do silly things based on those human instincts and urges. And those are crimes. And um, how do we fix those crimes without really understanding why we tick as a race? In any case, you know, I, I see maybe deeper seated things like a lack of impulse control. 
as a motivation for some kind of homosexual community because really they just like to fucking, they want to feel good and come and then they found an avenue to get that every day or every way or freedom within this, oh, free willy society, I would say. And, um, <laughs> free willy. <laughs> it's like free in the fucking, the whale. Have you, anybody seen free willy? Let me know. Um, the kid trains the fucking orca and tries to get it back in the ocean and it was born in captivity or maybe it wasn't I'm not sure I don't remember the movie all the way sometimes I have uh, infinite access to everything in my head and I'm kind of looking through that movie right now and it's been so long since I've seen it that um, I would say I think the whale was wild first and then its dorsal fin flopped over because it was in captivity. And then he wanted to release it back to the ocean. I think that that's the, uh, the, the plot. If I'm wrong, let me know if you've seen it. But, you know, it's like um, there's a lot of problems with people that they don't want to look at. And that can cause an uproar, someone pointing it out. I mean, it could piss off a whole community of people. And I'm not attempting to do that, but I am attempting to have the whole community of people understand why they're pissed off. Because it, it really, really comes down to self-work. So, like I said, there's some people that are really inherently balanced and would understand the message and not be offended by it. And then there's other people that are fucking really not imbalanced. I mean, really not imbalanced. Hmm. What's that? What is it when you're really not imbalanced? Are you like super, super balanced? And then you got the people that are really lopsided, angry individuals out there trying to tell everybody what to do. Super fucking angry. I mean, and per, per, first of all, they're probably just super pissed off at themselves and trying to bury the hatchet in somebody else's back. I don't fucking like that shit. I gotta get back to jogging. I've been walking and building up my joints again because uh, for a long time I've been lazy. The jogger just reminded me of this. He ran by and I was like, inspiration. Look at what I can become. All I have to do is apply myself. I've always looked at everything. It's like uh, lessons and other people's mistakes as blessings to not make those mistakes because I learned from their actions. That's how I am. I don't want to get back to that really controversial topic, but I do. I just, I see parts of this as poison, right? The world's poisoned with a bunch of distasteful dishonesty and distruth. It's inherently against the human condition of what would be natural. That's where my morals lie. Nature, natural. I mean, if we were supposed to mate with a man... Don't you think men would have babies? I mean, it's natural to breed, right? It's our natural human instinct. What happens if we bury that our whole life and we don't have it? I think that's an imbalance. Um, and then those couples, they adopt. And then they, they're retraining some other little life that came from somebody else in the same manner. And it could be any... I've seen some shit. I've seen a, a, a female couple... And um, they, they own a winery near here. And they had one, one boy and another boy. And um, they were damn near close to twins. And one boy is totally femaled out, completely. Hair and nails done, totally femaled out. Inherently ingrained to be female. And then you have the other boy that's a little boy. And it's like... Okay, so I see the imbalance here, and it's breeding. Now, can I just let it go and understand that that's, that's human evolution at its finest? Because, you know, people are doing or expressing themselves in whatever ways. Maybe. But then I see the perversion of the life that was shaped. Because children are open to interpretation and shaping, and it's how we create 
life. We, we, mate, we make a baby and then we raise that baby and shape it into a beautiful human being one way or the other. Now, it's in our image that we create our children. They really grow up into our image, especially if we have a lot of influence and power over them. I leave my children to learn at the hands of others too. So they have a, a variety of influence and they can make their own decisions. My daughter wanted her hair dyed. So I dyed her hair because she chose, I want my hair dyed. I didn't do some temporary shit. I tried to do permanent. So I did the bleach and everything first. And it was like, she made a choice and there's, there's her permanent decision. She learns. I mean, a lot of people make choices nowadays and they're like, oh, and it's just temporary. Don't, it's not fucking permanent. Look at marriage values. They're down the fucking drain. Ugh. So many fucked up things about the world not being natural anymore. And I, it, most people don't want to be natural. They want to be some kind of man-made perversion, perverting nature, and making, remaking nature, right, in their image because, well, nature wasn't good enough to begin with. It's painfully blunt, some of the things I say and, and my viewpoints and topics. And that's how I am. And, and to each their own. I mean, pretty much if you're not going to like what I have to say, you're not going to fucking listen to me. It's okay. Maybe that was why you're not supposed to be getting the message. Maybe you won't. Maybe you'll go through your fucking life eyes wide shut. You know, you think you're seeing everything, but you're really closed off to something much more beautiful inside. Something that you'll never find in this shell. Not in this lifetime. And that's okay. I mean, there's, everybody has their place and their soul growth and their soul contracts. And uh, I have this painfully, painfully blunt expression I'm gonna say right now to whoever made it this far. I have eye contact and I see soul contracts. I see their growth. That's what I, that's my gift. I got that shit walking around. There's a song. I'm a quote. It's a. It's a song. Maybe most people would know, by Alan Parsons Project, and it goes, "I am the eye in the sky, the maker of rules. I can read your mind. I am the uh, maker of rules, dealing with fools. I can treat you blind, not cheat you." <laughs> And I ain't got to say anymore, believe me, I can read your mind looking at you. Well, kind of blessed with um, very similar consciousness as the Alan Parsons project expressed in their music. And with that, I bid you adieu. I hope you go outside and I hope you light up somebody's world with love and light. And sometimes love and light isn't what somebody wants, but it's what somebody needs. And that's the point. Because a lot of people need humans more than a shell of what it is to be human walking around doing a bunch of fucking damage. And that's how we ended up in a mess. Collectively, as a human race, we're a fucking mess. There's a bunch of people running around doing a bunch of damage constantly, be it that they're littering. And, they, you know, if we put the garbage down deep enough in the earth, it'll go back to where it's supposed to quick. I mean, I say that if we, if we put plastic down deep enough or into lava, what happens to the plastic then? Doesn't it just, boop, gone? I mean, come on. We could use a fucking lava incinerator for all of our plastic. And then the vapor would go immediately into the atmosphere, right? And then what does that do to our ozone? Well, I haven't looked into that. But if it's down deep enough then the earth is going to compress that shit and maybe it'll help it turn back into oil like uh, part of the plastic that it is, right? Maybe. Maybe over a lot of time the shit will just go back, right? Robin Williams springs into my mind. He's all, I'll be back, but I'm coming out as oil. Talking about the dinosaurs. <laughs> I have a, a cool theory about how the dinosaurs met their end. I say theory as in I've seen this in my head with my imagination. I won't tell you unless you ask me. <laughs> if you ask me about how the dinosaurs met their end, I'll give you a little spiel. And you go, huh, that's cool and it makes sense. 
Maybe not. Maybe you go, there's no fucking way. <laughs> and um, it's, a, it's like a, a secret from the universe. <laughs> Who wants secrets? <laughs> I'm just joking. Okay, I love you all. Peace out. Be good.